Howdy folks, my name is Richie aka Bog Otter and earlier I uploaded a video of Blackgate's first, world first, to kill of Tequadl the Sunless, the redesigned boss in the Tequadl Rising patch for Guild Wars 2. Well I thought I'd go through the footage this time and kind of show you a little bit of the strategy that we went through to actually beat the boss and give you some tips and tricks and uh, you know we had a coordinated group of about 130 people on TeamSpeak and uh, even though for the first kill we needed that, you know hopefully people learn the fight over time and kind of, kind of implement some some, uh, strategies to help them out um, this is just the strategy that we used obviously other strategies can work uh, as well now while we're in this buffing stage here we actually use a lot of consumables right we use potions of undead slang right you get a 10% bonus to your damage and a 10% reduction of damage taken um, you also get some food buffs you want it you want to stack power um, Quaddal is not uh, able to be crit at this time so it, it's not uh, really a, a benefit for you to use a, a lot of crit um, now we're stacking up the group kind of in the middle on a commander. It's useful to only have like one commander tag active so you don't get confused if possible. You want to, and it might seem kind of, kind of counterintuitive to stack in one group, um, but well, we did this for a couple of reasons. One is it allowed the turrets to actually use their poison cleanse ability in one area and concentrate that because that's one of the most important things of the fight. Is you got to keep that poison cloud cleansed on the group. And if people are spread out all over the place, you're not going to be able to do that effectively. You can also use the four and five skill, that, which are buffs on the turrets. Um, one is a, one is like a damage increase, and one is more of a protection, and it allows you also to hit that area. We can also do things as like drop war banners uh, for warriors to actually revive people quickly. Uh, as you'll see time and time again in this fight, the uh, the tidal waves unfortunately are really hard to time and dodge, especially when there's a large amount of people and, and lag. You know, it, it, you, you can dodge too early or you can jump too early, and it's really kind of difficult to do that in this situation. As you can see here, a lot of us are going down from that. So we uh, we stack up for a lot of other reasons too. You know, we can share buffs. Guardians can put up uh, d different shields. We can use uh, um, uh, all the elementalists are constantly putting down ice bows. Uh, they do a ton of damage in this fight. The number four skill. Like absolutely Rex to Quaddle. Uh, we also do fiery great swords from the elementalist during the uh, burn phases, which we'll get to in a little bit. So there's a lot of reasons to kind of stack up. You can probably do a two uh, a two a two point system where you have some people on the left and some people on the right, but we found it best to just kind of stack up in the middle. Now there are turret groups, which uh, you can't really see uh, in this in this picture that well, but we have six people on turrets. Um, we tried to make sure that they were all on voice chat with us to help coordinate so we can call out different things. Um, but yeah, th this fight is a little bit at the mercy of those six people. If you don't have uh, six people that know what they're doing on the turrets, you're going to have a hard time. But you also need people defending the turrets. Uh, there's going to be creatures and champions that you want to... Uh, to, uh, to you know to assign people to, to get rid of if you have a heavy uh, support build a healing spec um, someone um, you know maybe some hammer warriors and different things those are the type of uh, uh, characters that are really good at defending turrets you want to keep large groups of uh, creatures away and you also want to deal with the uh, Tequadal's fingers those kind of outstretched little tendrils that are out there you have to kind of uh, do that quite a bit. Now, you see here I died. Um, the the Carabriar waypoint over to the east is probably the closest one. Some people like to swim from the north, but I, I prefer this method. Um, the tricky thing about running back here is the, the group of Risen, you'll see them in a minute, um, you want to be able to dodge past them or use a speed buff or something to get past them because they have a lot of annoying abilities to pull you back and stun you and immobilize you. Um, so you got to try to work your way through this quickly. It takes, it takes a good chunk of time away if you die, but that's a really important thing uh, about the fight. If you go down, you need to immediately res and run back. You cannot be resed if you go down down. Now, um, <laughs> if you go down down, doesn't that sound great? So you, you definitely want to you know, not waste any time and get back to the fight as soon as possible. Now, you can see that we're already like, f you know, what is it, four minutes into the fight and, uh, or close to four minutes into the fight. We haven't really taken a lot of Tequadal's health down. That's okay. The The fight is a little bit deceptive. The first uh, the first 25% go the slowest, and then it goes quicker uh, after that. Because there's going to be numerous burn phases, which you'll see. Uh, every 25%, uh, the phase ch kind of changes here for a while. So even though it looks like his health isn't going down very fast, we're still at a good pace at this point. Um, now you can see here as I run past the uh, people defending the turrets and we're trying to get back into the action here. 
Let me show you real quick a little bit of what it looks like from the turret's perspective. There are five abilities. The first one is a damage spike. You only really want to use that on Tequaddle during the burn phase when Tequaddle is stunned. The number two ability has to be used every time it's off cooldown. Uh, that is a armor debuff. It actually gets rid of the armored scale uh, buffs on Tequaddle. If, if that stacks too high, you will get bone walls that you'll have to defeat, and uh, Tequaddle becomes immune, so that wastes a lot of time. Number three is the poison cloud remover. You want to stack, uh, you want to put that on your raid as often as possible. You also have to use that on your own turret from time to time to make sure you don't die while you're manning the turret. Number four is a buff. It is an offensive buff for your group. It's an AOE targeted thing. And number five is a defensive one. You can use those when you have time. But two and three are the most important things to remember. If you die in the turret, it's important that somebody else picks up the turret right away. And if the turrets go down, you need to have people pick up the hammers that are nearby and repair them as quick as possible. They are essential to the fight. At 75% health, 50% health, and 25% health, Tequata will enter a new phase. This is kind of like an intermission. The timer will stop, and you will have a dynamic event to actually do to charge the Mega Laser. You need to protect uh, the batteries and the Mega Laser, but uh, sometimes during the phase change, you might get sucked into the undertow here. If this happens to you, you got to swim up through the beam of light. If you do it quickly enough, you will not go into a down state, but if you're slow, you can emerge and actually be down for the count. Uh, this is also a great time to be running back. If you are dead dead, you want to be booking it back during this phase uh, so you don't miss the burn phase that, that follows. Now, right now, we are protecting uh, three batteries uh, from, from getting destroyed by a whole bunch of Risen and the Mega Laser itself. Now, we didn't have to assign people to specific places, but we did communicate with each other if any of them seemed lightly manned. Um, we have to send extra people. Definitely use the jump pads to get around quickly. Some of these are quite far away. Um, and basically, you just want to keep people away from the batteries. Um, you you fight them at range. Some of the uh, some of the crate actually have ranged attacks, and so you got to be careful. And champions do a lot of damage uh, to to these structures. Now, what we do is we actually leave uh, early. Once we once we're confident that it's not going to go down, we actually jump back and we get in position to burn to quaddle down because this is where you're going to do most of your DPS right after this phase. So if we're looking, uh, you know, if we're looking at the the battery's health and we we see that we we're in a good place, we might leave with 20 seconds left to go or 15 seconds left to go and just. Uh, you know, sometimes it's gotten a little close and uh, the batteries have been close to, to going down because we left it uh, unmanned. But um, overall, uh, you know, you, you got to kind of find the sweet spot there and, and, and figure it out because you definitely want to be in position for the next phase. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start launching ourselves back and we're going to get in position. Now, for the burn phase, what we do is we stack up in melee range. You can actually target his right uh, right foot, and it's it, it's it's a good time to actually break out your highest DPS weapons, save all of your big cooldowns for this moment. Um, we actually put down a bunch of fiery great swords for this for this time, so that we can get maximized damage. And uh, this is your your big chance to just you know really unload on the boss and uh, get his health going down. Now the turret people are going to be spamming their number one. They can also do the poison cleanses as well during this. But uh, you know other other than that, everybody should be here DPSing. And you want to get to uh, melee range as soon as possible here on his foot. And if you watch, his health uh, will will go down quite rapidly at this point. Now when this phase ends, he's going to immediately do some tidal waves and he's going to start being dangerous and deadly really quick. But you kind of want to stay in as long as you can so you can ma maximize this damage because it is very difficult to beat that timer and uh, you want to be you want to be ahead of the, the ball game if you can. Alright, so we're just going to go back to our normal phase 1 position and stack up. Now you're going to do that same thing two more times. You know, at 50% and 25% health, you're going to do the same thing and you can already see that the... Uh, the health on Tequaddle is much, much lower than it was just a, a little while ago. And uh, so the, the the first half of the fight is deceptively slow and, and it kind of speeds up toward the end. So don't give up. Don't don't look at the timer and go, oh, we're not even at 50% yet. Yet we only have a few minutes left. Uh, it, it does go quicker and quicker uh, as, as, you, as, you, as you move on from that point. 
Skipping ahead to the last burn phase, and this will actually ultimately show you the kill as well. Um, just just a couple you know things to reiterate. The armored scale buff onto Quattle uh, stacks up. If it gets to 20, it will spawn the bone wall, but stacks of it do not actually reduce your damage. So it, it doesn't matter if he has 10 stacks or 5 stacks. You're not going to be doing more damage. Just make sure it doesn't go up to 20. You also really want to make sure you have uh, potions of undead slaying. That 10% damage reduction and damage bonus really helps a whole lot. If you really want to knock yourself out, go for the sigil of undead slaying. Do even more damage. You also want to use uh, boosters if you have any. So this is a great fight to use those consumables that just stack up in your inventory and never get used. Um, the other thing is the Tequadal's fingers, those tendrils that hang out of the ground. Those are the things that actually spawn the poison cloud. So make sure that those are going down, especially near the turrets. So is this fight difficult? Yes. Is it really difficult, if, especially if you're on like an overflow server? Yes. Is it possible? Absolutely. Um, is it always going to be require people on TeamSpeak? Well, that's yet to be seen. I think once people get used to it, you know, it's only been one day, so I wouldn't panic now and be calling for nerfs. Uh, it is challenging, and uh, yes, we did it uh, using TeamSpeak, but, you know, you know, people might be able to eventually do this once they learn the fight and get coordinated. Uh, it does heavily depend on the six people in the turret, unfortunately, and people do want to jump in those turrets and get the achievement for it, so it, it can be problematic. Uh, in that regard, I love how at the end of the video I got sucked uh, into the undertow and, and kind of uh, missed some of the most important parts there. But a win is a win, and you can see the achievements I get there. Now the the loot people I, I've seen uh, you know complain a little bit that it's lackluster. The loot that I personally get is not that great. But you got to keep in mind if they always gave you a, an ascended weapon or or some rare skin or whatever, well this would quickly be not a such a rare thing to to get right. Because you know people eventually sh should be killing this you know fairly frequently, and uh, you know you can't get the the best loot drops every single time. Before I end, I'd just like to give a big shout out to the Black Eight community who came out and coordinated on Teamspeak. The people that were leading, the commanders, the people on the Teamspeak for that is usually used for World vs. World. We couldn't have done this without you. Thank you so much for all of your uh, help and coordination last night. It was a lot of fun. Well, that's going to wrap things up. If you like this video, then click on the like button. That helps my channel out a whole lot. You can also feel free to ask me any questions or comments in the comments field below. Also, click on that subscribe button if you're new to my channel so you can be notified when I release future videos. I hope everybody has a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Take care.